welcome to our show today. We're going to be discussing healing a broken marriage. I am amazed at how many marriages dissolve, yeah. how many times we don't look towards biblical principle to keep marriages together. And Deborah, I know you know a lot about this topic. Well, Robin, you know, I get phone calls and emails from men and women every day because people are suffering in their marriage because the world has told them that, you know, it's, it's okay to divorce, you know, if you're tired of this one, then you move on to the next one. You know, but the fact is, is that in Genesis, when God said that we marry, we become one flesh. Yeah. And when you think about ripping flesh apart, that's going to leave a scar. Absolutely. So it's not meant for us to get a divorce. And even in Malachi, God says that he hates divorce. Absolutely. You know, and then, you know, uh, people ask questions. Well, you know, maybe I married the wrong person. And, and my answer to that is, well, you know, once you say I do, that is the, the right person. Yeah. That's the right person. <laughs> and when that's you rip right. that flesh apart, it doesn't come apart cleanly either. Part of that person mm. goes that way. Part of this person goes the other way from the standpoint of, mm. you know, how the wounds of the soul remain with that uh, tearing apart. It can't be a clean break. No. Mm. It can never be a clean break. Mm. And, you know, God's heart for marriage, it's so important that we understand he really does hate divorce, doesn't he, Deborah? He does. He hates divorce. The damage it does to the children, mm -hmm. the damage it does right. to the person, it's almost like a cycle of unending pain. Yeah. God does that because he wants to protect us. He wants to show us his love through the marriage covenant. Yes, he does. And you know, it even says in Matthew that, um, you know, people say, well, but didn't God, you know, allow divorce because Moses gave the bill of divorcement. But it says in Matthew that because of the hardness of our heart, Absolutely. God has allowed this. Yeah. And what that is, is basically because we can't forgive. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to a place where we're offended and we can't forgive. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Amazing. that unforgiveness is going to keep us in bondage the rest of our lives, even if we get a divorce. Absolutely. Is an amazing topic. Yes. It? God has called Deborah Ross to evangelism as a speaker, author, singer, and choreographer for Jesus under the banner of Deborah Ross Ministries. God uses Deborah's contagious faith to minister the gospel in prisons, churches, television, radio, magazines, and more. Today, Deborah has joined us to talk about her new book, Healing a Broken Marriage. Healing a Broken Marriage is a teaching testimonial of her marriage, which was upside down for 18 years before God miraculously saved her husband and healed her broken heart. Her book is a lifeline for those in troubled marriages and a faith-building love story for those in good ones. Deborah's heart is to save families from divorce by teaching the life-giving principles in God's Word that lead to family wholeness. We'll be right back with Deborah Ross. Deborah, you've written a book mm -hmm. that has potential to impact homes across this nation in an incredible way. Can you share with me a little bit about your book? I would love to, Robin. My book is my story. Um, actually, it, it's just uh, uh, me sitting down at the computer and just journaling. And But God spoke to me. He said, this is going to be a book. I want you to get this published because it's an important story. It's an important message. And that is that my marriage was upside down for 18 years. Um, uh, six years of, of those 18 years, I was lost, my husband was lost. You know, we, we got married because selfish ambition, you know, <laughs> yes. you please me. Yes. And, you know, he's saying, you please me, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, but then I became a born again Christian and my husband um, was a counterfeit. He just kind of like, 
uh, accepted the fact that I was a Christian, started going to church with me and just said, yeah, I'm a Christian. And said I was baptized when I was 13. And so he just fell into that role and it was confusing to me as a new Christian. So, um, you know, I was the breadwinner. Um, you know, we were upside down in every way, but yet I was a Christian and I was, I was confused because, you know, my husband would go to church on me on Sunday and then, you know, Monday through Saturday, it was just not good. So, um, you know, drinking and, um, you know, there was drugs and just different things, pornography. And um, so anyway, um, you know, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And, and when the Lord revealed to me that, in fact, my husband was lost, you know, I was thinking, you know, well, who am I to judge? That was my first thought. Who am I to judge? But the Lord was like, you know, I want you to pray for his salvation. You're his oh. wife. You're his wife. And you know the heart of your husband. So I began to pray for his salvation. And Robin, everything got worse. It didn't get oh, got worse. my goodness, Deborah. So, you would think it would get better. So that's an important point. Yes. So it got worse because it's, it was a shakedown uh -huh. because God has to take you to the root of the situation to clean it up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. He's not going to just patch it up up here. You got to go back yeah, to the exactly. beginning. And that's not always comfortable. No, it was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So anyway, as we went through the shakedown, the finances were just in disarray. I mean, just unbelievable. I'm talking, you know, bankruptcy. Our house was in foreclosure three times. We never actually lost our home, mm -hmm. but it was in foreclosure. and. Just so many things were just going haywire in our household, you know, and I'm thinking, Lord, I don't understand this. You know, I love you. And by this time, I had been a Christian for 12 years. Wow. And, you know, everything was just going crazy. And um, the grand finale was adultery. Mm. And so, you know, at that point, my heart is so broken. Um, and I'm so... Um, mm. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, God, where are you? Where are you, God? You know, it's like, you know, I've believed you. I've been right there praying for 12 mm -hmm. years. You know, I, I believe that you you told me to pray for the salvation of my husband. And now this, I don't understand, you know. But, you know, I'm one of those kind of people where it's like, you know, either his word is true. Yes. Or either I'm going to die holding on to it. <laughs> yes. You know, because... Yes. You told me, you know, that, that, that my husband would be saved. You told me, Lord, that I would be blessed, yes. that I would be blessed coming and blessed going. You yes. told me, I, why am I in this financial, you know, situation? Because your word says that I'm to be blessed. So I'm going to hold on. And, and, you know, and forgiveness is the hardest part, Robin. Yes. So as, yes. I'm, as I'm in the forgiveness process, because it's a process, yes. I made a decision to fight for my marriage. My husband wow. became a born-again Christian. You know, of course, I didn't believe him. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but you know, but I was willing to watch. I was willing to watch and see because mm -hmm. I know I know what salvation did for me, and if God did that in in my life and in my heart, then He would do the same in my husband's if my husband was for real. Now that it takes so, a step of courage to say, okay, I'm really going to try to work through it. So you were honoring God in the marriage and being willing to put yourself on hold, knowing where your life had been, mm -hmm. to pray that your mm -hmm. husband really was sincere about his salvation. Right, right. And then mm -hmm. what happened, Deborah? Well, you know, it, it wasn't easy. I mean, I was I was a maniac for about a year. <laughs> really, I was a yes. maniac. I mean, I, I felt like if I could just chop my head off, yeah. I would be fine because, you know, this part of my body felt saved, but my head felt like yeah. I was losing it, like yeah. I wasn't saved anymore. <laughs> it was like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I was angry. I was bitterness. Um, bitterness was shoved down my throat. Mm -hmm. You know, here I was, a born-again, spirit-filled Christian who had been set free of all this junk from my past. Yes. And then all of a sudden, it's like I regressed and bitterness is shoved down my oh, throat. My. You know, and I feel dirty again. Yes. You know, yes. it's just strange. Yes. And so, you know, and I, and I knew that that bitterness would kill me. Yes. And I said, God, take it from me. So... I made a decision to fight for my marriage, but forgiveness was a process. And it started with that decision. And I just had to, you know, I just had to flesh it out. My flesh said, mm. hate, hate, hate. Yes. My flesh said, um, revenge, revenge, revenge. Oh, my. You know, but God said, no, be quiet. <sighs> be quiet. And so, Robin, I had to learn just to be quiet and just to listen to him. And so I began to write. And he began to just, you know, tell me what to say. And this is going to be a book because I want you to share this with other people because other people are going through the same yes. thing and they yes. need to hear this.
Deborah, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. You said mm -hmm. that everything in your flesh said hate, hate, hate. Mm -hmm. And you're, you really had bitterness in your heart mm -hmm. because you had been in a place where you'd been deceived. And so, you know, it's justifiable that you were not comfortable in believing. How, how did you fight hate? How did you fight bitterness? Because it could have taken you over and taken you down. I'll tell you in the physical what I did, and it's, it's yes. a spiritual physical combination. <laughs> yes. um, I would be driving down the road, Robin, and I would be overcome with just overcome with anger. I, yes. I mean, like the, the devil would tell me, run your car off the road and kill yourself because you're going to lose your mind. And I would just scream out to the Lord and I would just, you know, every, every um, scripture that I'd ever memorized, I would claim it and I would, you know, claim it against the work of the enemy. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and so, and I would just, and I would hold on to the promises of God. And I, you know, I wasn't saying it against the Lord. I was saying against the devil. Yes. This is who God says that I am, mm. you know? Yes. And I would just, and, and, and it was, it was, um, the violent take it by force. I was taking my marriage by force. I was taking forgiveness, you know, in the spirit realm by force. I would be in, asleep uh, in, in the bed at night. In the middle of the night, sound asleep, have a panic attack. I would have visions of things that, you know, I mm -hmm. shouldn't be having visions of mm -hmm. because it was torment. The yes. enemy was tormenting torment. me. And so I would get up in the middle of the night. I would go to my closet, literally, mm -hmm. because I didn't want my children to hear me. I was hurting so bad. And I would close the door and just scream. Just scream, God, take it from me. Take it. I said, Lord, take me up to the high place. Take me up yes. to the high place so that I can look down and see this from your perspective because I, it's crushing me, mm -hmm. you know? And, and every time I would do that, he would take it from me. But see, the enemy would come back. Mm -hmm. The enemy would come back because the enemy doesn't give up easily. That's right. You know? And see, I came from a broken home. My husband came from a broken home. So there was a generational curse at work mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And the enemy was going to try to push us to the edge so that we would be another statistic. Another broken home. Yes. yes. Yep. And so, and I had enough of the word in me to know that. Although, you know, a part of me thought that divorce would have been easier. Yes. You know? But it wouldn't have. That it would not have been easier. Exactly it would not right. have. But anyway, but just through purging, that's that's how I overcame purging. You know, just crying out to the Lord, asking Him to take me up to the high place, asking Him to take it from me. Um, you know, just holding on to His word, every word that I could think of. And sometimes I can only think of one word. Yes. Sometimes yep. I can only think of help me. <laughs> really, yes. just yeah, help well, me. Absolutely. That's it. You know, um, so just holding on and not giving up. And, you know, and it's funny because one day I woke up and it was gone. That's amazing. I and it was about a year. It was about a year. Mm -hmm. But it was just one day it was gone. And, and my husband is a beautiful, born again, spirit filled man of God. You know, and it's unbelievable because it's God did exceedingly abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. You know, I just wanted him to stop drinking, you know, and stop smoking, <laughs> you know, and of course I wanted him to be saved, but I never fathomed that he would be, you know, uh, preaching the gospel and, oh, and going into prisons and addiction recovery ministries. I never, never fathomed that because that just wasn't who he was. So he had so, a radical transformation too in this yes, process. Yes. Now when you, when, was there a point where through a potential divorce, is that what turned him? What turned your husband? Well, I know the prayers. Mm -hmm. The prayers prayed for years. Mm -hmm. But was there a point in his life where he kind of woke up and said, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose my family? It, did it take that to get him to change mm -hmm. his ways? I think all of the sins that he was involved with all along, he justified all of them. Okay, so he never felt like he was a bad person. He really thought he was a Christian. Ah. He was a counterfeit. He really thought he, he was really a Christian. Yeah. yeah, because he had been baptized. So he thought... You know, grace, 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 I'm a Christian, you know. <laughs> and so, um, but when he committed adult, see, he and I loved each other very much. We still do, of course, but um, I was his best friend. He's my best friend. And he never thought that he would stoop to the level of adultery. Ah. And it actually occurred for like nine months. So it wasn't a one-time thing. It was it was a long experience. But when, when, when it was revealed, when he revealed it actually by not coming home one night, it's like when he was tired of just uh, who knows what, I guess the devil just took him down that path of destruction. And so when he got to that place, you know, where he didn't come home and everything was revealed and I knew, 
and I was broken. And, and I think he realized at that point that he was a sinner and he needed a savior. Yeah. And at that point, it really wasn't even about him. I mean, of course he didn't want to lose his family, but it wasn't about that. It was about, even if I lose my family, God, at least I'll have you. Mm. That's where he was. Powerful. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Powerful. And then after that, I, I, I can't even imagine the pain, mm -hmm. but how did you get to a point where you decided, I'm going to come out, I'm going to be an overcomer, and God started to plant a mission in your heart. Deborah, I want to hear about uh, the mission, but before we go there, touch a, uh, just for a few minutes on the financial end of things. Okay, Robin. Well, you know, I had been a Christian for 12 years before my marriage came to an <laughs> abrupt halt, yeah. as you might think. But, um, and so I had read in God's Word, you know, and I believed God's Word that I was to be blessed. You know, I believed that I was to prosper and be in health even as my soul prospered. You know, I believed that I was to be the head and not the tail, the oh. first and not the last, the lender and not the bar. I thought <laughs> yeah. that I was going to have houses I didn't build and wells I didn't dig, <laughs> yeah. you know, and vineyards I didn't plant. And so when all of this happened with our finances, you know, it, it looked like that, that you know, to people that didn't believe like I believe, they were all, I felt like everybody was pointing their finger at me like, you, 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 you see, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, whatever. And it looked like that I was wrong in my faith, you know? Um, but God never let us uh, be ashamed. He never let us be ashamed. We never came to utter destruction. Um, we felt, it felt awfully close at times, okay? Um, but he always provided for us. I mean, even when I felt like I couldn't even buy milk for my children, God mm -hmm. always provided. I mean, you know, neighbors that didn't know what was going on would grow um, vegetables in their garden, <laughs> knock on the door and say, oh, we're going out of town, would you like to have these? And I'm thinking, you don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> but anyway, I wanna say this, that God's word is true. Uh, my husband is uh, doing great financially, and you know, this is a bad economy, and my husband's a real estate agent, and God is prospering him because God's Word is true. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is, we couldn't, we could not receive the prosperity of God at that time because our, our marriage was messed up. Mm -hmm. There was a break in our covenant relationship. There was sin going on. You know, but now that God has brought us both in and we're both worshiping Him yes. and we're both in one accord, yes. you know, and, and we're tithing and we're giving, then yes, God loves and He wants to take care of His children. So people, you know, need to know that if they're suffering in finances, God even cares about your finances. Yes, he, does. he cares about your finances. Yes. And tremendous. And now you're um, speaking, you're doing conferences. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing right now. Well, Robin, um, you know, I just want to share my story because I, I feel like God has given me the message that He wants families whole. Yes. That's what He's saying to me. God wants your family whole. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He will stop at nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's so um, funny because, you know, when I hear stories from different people, all the stories are the same because the devil has no, nothing new. Yeah. He does the same thing with everybody. You know, and if we can just learn what his tricks are, and if we can learn what God's word says, yes. then we can overcome by the blood of the lamb, you know, and, and just, you know, claim the victory and shout the glory because our families are whole and we start a new generation of children who come from a family that's not broken. That's right. You know? That's right. That That's very powerful because, um, I really believe that Satan's plan is to destroy the family. Yes. I think it's mm -hmm. that simple. Mm -hmm. And he's using things like pornography yes. and drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol and uh, over workers, overachievers, mm -hmm. anything that he can do to pull you away from the family mm -hmm. where you're less committed and less concerned. Mm -hmm. And the 
family starts to crumble. Mm -hmm. It starts to crumble. What did you do in your family to hold things together when it was you alone holding it together? Mm -hmm. Even in, um, in the worst times. Robin, you know what? I even had a vision um, at the lowest point of my life before everything was revealed to me. Okay, I was... And to say, I was deceived. I was deceived. You know, I believed that everything was fine in a way. I knew it was not, but you know, in my heart, I was like, oh, you know, you know, my husband's not, he would never cheat on me and that kind of thing, you know. But I had a vision of my home, which my home is not made out of wood boards, but it, I, in my vision, it was made out of wood, wood boards. And I could see those boards peeling away and I kept trying to prop them back up and they were peeling faster than I could prop them. Mm. I couldn't get them up fast enough. It was, my home was falling apart and oh, I couldn't get them wow. back up. And you know, um, so I don't know that I did anything to hold my home together except believe God. That's mm -hmm. it. It was accounted unto Abraham for righteousness because he believed God. Yes. That's all I did. Yes. I believed God and I would not let go until he blessed me. Mm -hmm. That's that's all, you know. I mean, yes, I loved my husband and I watched my words. You know, I tried to have good, pleasing words, words that would build him up, even though it was tempting to say, you know, you idiot or why did <laughs> yeah. you, you know. Oh, you know. you're a good person. <laughs> But, you know, and, and I'm not perfect, you yeah. know, but, I, but the Lord, the Holy Spirit would arrest me. Yes. If I said the wrong thing, the Holy Spirit would arrest that me. That is precious. You know, and so I would have to, you know, I would learn to watch my words and, and just to love him into the kingdom, um, even when he didn't deserve my love. Tremendous. When he didn't deserve it, you know, but it had nothing to, really to do with me other than the fact that I was just a willing vessel mm -hmm. who tried to obey the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and let God work. Mm. That's it. And it's amazing so, that it can truly be that simple, mm -hmm. but it doesn't feel simple at the time. Mm -mm. It's, mm -mm. It feels very difficult mm -hmm. because storms come mm -hmm. and we have to get through that time and holding on to Him is our only anchor. Yes. It's our yes. only anchor it's that only we have. Anchor. Mm. Well, I love your book. Mm. I love your ministry. Mm. It is vital. Mm -hmm. We're in a situation now across this country, divorce is rampant, yes, homes is. are torn apart. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is very, very important work. And I thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Are you overwhelmed with fear? What about anxious or distressing thoughts? Has depression or low self-esteem plagued your life? What if someone could give you real answers to these real problems? Robin Bertram, one of the most passionate teachers of our time in the field of personal transformation, has helped hundreds of people discover the path to spiritual liberation and wholeness. Her word-based, critically acclaimed book, Shadows Among Us, contains a powerful message of hope and healing. For your own personal copy of Shadows Among Us or an audiobook, go to robinbertram.tv. Marriage is a divine institution ordained by God. It's the deepest and most profound spiritual unity that exists between human beings. It is the institution of a divine covenant, a promised oath that signifies and fulfills God's purpose in creation by the spiritual union of a man and a wife. We see the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan, His unfailing love for His creation and His design for unity and blessing in the sacred rite of marriage. It's worth fighting for. A broken marriage can be restored, but you have to deal openly and honestly with your emotions. You have to be committed to work and really want things to work out. You have to look beyond your own desires and do what's best in the long run. 
first of all, start with trusting God. Pray and ask Him to guide and lead you. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in our trouble. You can and must require honesty from your spouse and have a plan in place to ensure that honesty. Rely on your church to help you through this process. Call them for accountability partners for both you and your spouse. Make hurt your enemy. It's easy to fall into a trap of victim mentality, which will damage your future. Require from your spouse openness, accountability, and an assurance with a desire to work through such a betrayal. Decide to walk in humility, patience, and a forgiving heart. If you do, you're allowing God to work on your behalf. Only God can change a heart. We so dishonor God when we ignore His precepts and we get hurt in the process. It does take two to hold a marriage together but you're only responsible for your part. Isn't it time to understand that God's laws and precepts are for our own good? Remember to trust God. Focus on God instead of dwelling on the pain of your betrayal. Rely on your church for accountability. Make hurt and rejection your enemy. Walk in humility, patience and a forgiving heart, and let God do the rest. Above all things, forgive your spouse so that you can walk in freedom today. Robin Bertram Ministries is transforming lives by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Partners of this ministry keep shows like Freedom Today on the air. Would you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry by sowing a monthly or a one-time financial seed of any amount? Because together, we can transform lives and bring freedom today.